Hi, welcome to Cinema Synopsis. Today I will show you a crime, drama, action film from 2018 titled Den of Thieves. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Just before the break of dawn, an armored truck stops outside a donut shop in Los Angeles and two security guards go in. A car and an SUV block off the truck. Outlaws wearing body armor and gas masks emerge with shotguns and assault rifles as the two guards exit the shop. The truck driver alerts the LAPD that they're being held up while the outlaws aim their guns at the guards. One of the guards reaches for his gun but is shot down by an outlaw and then another outlaw shoots the driver. The outlaws force the truck's rear doors open and pull out the fourth guard. The LAPD arrive and a shootout ensues but their handguns are no match for the outlaws' assault rifles. Four cops and one outlaw are killed in the shootout and the outlaws get away with the armored truck. They pull into a warehouse. Ray, the leader, reprimands Bosco for killing the security guard and tells his crew that they have to patch up the armored truck because they need it clean. He opens the truck's rear doors as Ensign asks him if he's okay. Ray responds, we're cop killers now. Detective Nick O'Brien arrives at the crime scene and walks up to his team of Los Angeles Sheriff Department officers standing around the outlaw's body. Detective Boracho explains the crime scene and Nick realizes that they're dealing with skilled thieves who knew that there would be no air support at that location. Detective Murph tells Nick that they got away with only an empty armored truck and Detective Tony Z concludes that they must have gotten a bad tip and botched the job. Meanwhile, Bosco is in a car across the street taking photos of the team of detectives. At the workshop, Bosco shows Ray the photos he took and points out Nick as the guy in charge. Ray recognizes Nick and looks him up. Ensign says that Nick played football at South. Ray tells his crew that Nick runs the major crimes division. Donnie, the getaway driver, looks at the photo of Nick and walks away. Nick and his team are investigating the case at the LASD. They conclude that it was an inside job because the outlaws knew about a transfer that wasn't scheduled through the regular carrier. The team suspects Ray, who was released on parole eight months ago. Donnie is bartending at night when a Federal Reserve Bank employee leaves the bar and forgets his Fed access card. He puts it in the cash register and walks over to Mac, another member of Ray's crew. Donnie downs a shot with Mac and two of his friends, Boss and Alexi. Nick is sitting at the bar questioning Donnie who explains that the bar is neutral grounds, anyone is welcome. Nick says that Donnie must have heard some stories in there and he confirms. When Donnie gets in his car after his shift is over, Nick tases him through the open window and knocks him out. Donnie wakes up in an unfamiliar bed. He walks out of the bedroom to find Nick's team and four women in the motel room. Nick shows Donnie a surveillance photo of him meeting with Ray and Detective Gus tells Donnie that they know who he is. He got arrested for GTA, did time in county jail for attempted manslaughter, and got the fastest speeding ticket in California history. Gus says that he's one mistake away from going back to jail. Donnie tells the officers that he's seen Ray at the bar a few times but that's about it. Nick shows Donnie a tattoo on his arm of a skeleton with the word regulators beneath it. He tells Donnie that it means he's a member of a clique, which is a gang of cops who don't play by the rules. They don't book criminals, they just shoot them. Nick asks Donnie what a coward like him is doing hanging out with a crew of convicts. He strangles Donnie who confesses that he's just the driver and is kept in the dark about the crew's operations. Nick tells Donnie to keep doing his thing and they'll be in touch. Nick arrives home at dawn and his wife confronts him about cheating. She shows him a text he accidentally sent to her phone. She takes their daughters and leaves. The crew is surveilling the LA branch of the Federal Reserve and Ray tells them that it's the only bank that's never been robbed. He explains the Fed's extreme security measures and says there have been 53 break-in attempts and not one has got past the lobby, that's why we're gonna rob it. At LASD headquarters, the regulators discover that Ray, Ensign, Bosco, and Donnie all served in the Marines. They're reviewing unsolved heists and figure out that there were no highly sophisticated ones during the 10 years Ray spent in prison. Nick tells the regulators that if they nail Ray, they solve all the unsolved cases. As they go out for a lunch break, Nick is served with divorce papers. Ray and his crew are back at the warehouse. He runs them through a day at the bank, focusing on how things work on the counting floor. Ray explains that every day the Fed erases the serial numbers of unfit bills from their database. Between 4 and 5 p.m. they shred the unfit bills. The debris is picked up by a waste management company and taken to the dump. He says that in a $100 banknote count room alone, an average of $30 million is designated as unfit daily. If they can get to the unfit bills before they go to the shredders and get out clean, they've got $30 million nobody's looking for. Donnie gets a job at a Chinese takeaway place that gets regular orders from employees at the Fed. He's delivering orders and walks into the Fed with two takeout bags. Security gives Donnie an access card and buzzes him in. He delivers one of the takeout bags to the ladies waiting in the cafeteria and heads into the bathroom where he hides the other bag in a ventilation shaft. Later that night, Ray and his crew are at a restaurant having dinner. 
The regulators also arrive and are seated at a table. Nick walks over to Ray's table and greets Donnie, whom he claims to have spotted at the gym. Nick then goes on to offend everyone at the table by insulting the football team that Ray used to play for and perving on the women until Gus pulls him away and apologizes on Nick's behalf. At the warehouse, Ray and his crew interrogate Donnie about him being a cop. Donnie denies it, but Ray pulls a gun on him and asks him how he knows Nick. Donnie folds and tells the crew that Nick came to him and that he knows who they are. He says he hasn't told Nick anything and hasn't seen him since. Ray believes him and tells Donnie to make sure that Nick knows the heist is going down on Friday. Donnie meets with Nick at a suit store and confronts him about almost blowing his cover at the restaurant. He tells Nick the heist is happening Friday but he doesn't know where. Nick goes to the shooting range where Ray is firing rounds. Nick loads clips and starts firing in an attempt to show off his skills. Ray is unimpressed. He shoots off several rapid-fire rounds and leaves. Nick is annoyed when he checks Ray's target and sees that all his bullets hit center mass. Nick goes to a club where Ray's girlfriend works at and watches the show. She gets off the stage, walks over to him and whispers something in his ear and they end up in her apartment. The next morning, when Ray walks in, she runs out of the living room and a shirtless Nick appears. They stare each other down and glance at the gun on the table. Nick motions with his eyes and gives Ray the go-ahead to grab it but Ray grins and doesn't take the bait. Instead, he walks past Nick into the bedroom and closes the door. Nick gets into his car, calls one of his mates and tells him the location of Ray's next heist that he got from Ray's GF. In the bathroom, she tells Ray that she did what he told her to. The heist day arrives and the regulators are surveilling the bank when a van stops in the parking lot. Ray and his crew get out, sporting bulletproof vests, face masks, and loaded assault rifles. They walk into the bank, shoot out the cameras, and yell at everyone to get down. The crew confiscates everyone's cell phones, fastens their hands with cable ties, and puts bags over their heads. Ray instructs the bank manager to phone 911 and tell the dispatchers to deliver $10 million in a helicopter loaded with fuel within an hour or else they'll kill one hostage every hour until their demands are met. He says that no cops are allowed to approach the bank and that they'll kill a hostage if a negotiator contacts them. The LAPD and the FBI arrive at the scene, sirens blaring. Inside the bank, the manager opens the vault. The phone rings and Ray answers on speaker. He asks if their demands are being met. The LAPD negotiator says they're working on it. Ray says, you just killed a hostage and hangs up. Bosco takes a hostage to the back and a gunshot goes off. The negotiator calls the bank again, and the manager answers. He says that the robbers have already killed a hostage and they'll kill another if he calls again before their demands are met. He asks if they can wait 90 minutes. Ray nods and the bank manager confirms that they can. Outside, law enforcement is looking at schematics of the bank. An explosion goes off and they assume that Ray's crew has blown open the safe. Nick points to something on the schematics and asks Tony Z what it is. He says it's a sewer line but according to the map it's cemented up. Nick stares at a manhole and contemplates. He says they've got to move, grabs a crowbar, and pries open the bank's front door. He asks the hostages if they're okay and heads to the back where he finds the hostage that Ray supposedly shot, unharmed. Meanwhile, Ray and his crew exit the sewer through a manhole. The regulators enter the bank with their weapons drawn. They go into the vault and see a hole in the floor revealing the sewer line. Nick is already down in the sewer following them. Matt calls the Fed pretending to be from Alameda Security Company. He schedules a drop-off from Pico Rivera Savings for 2.45, which is two minutes away. Ray and Ensign are dressed as Alameda armed guards, driving the armored truck that they stole. It's been revamped to look like an Alameda truck. They pull up to a security gate at the Fed and show their IDs to the Federal Reserve officer on duty who lets them through. They park the truck, pull two money tubs out of the rear, and roll them into the receiving area on the counting floor. The money counters roll the money tubs into the $100 bill counting room. Ray and Ensign go to the waiting room. Bosco is in the utility tunnel beneath the Fed. He receives radio confirmation from Ray that Donnie is inside the counting room. Bosco flips a switch on the power grid that sends the Fed into a brownout, turning off the banknote shredders as well as the camera and motion sensors in the $100 count room. A police security guard tells the counters to take a break because they have to shut down for a bit. After the counters and police security exit the counting floor, Ray signals Donnie over the radio that he's clear. Donnie is crammed inside a money tub, surrounded by stacks of $100 bills. He gets out and stacks the money back into the tub. One of the Fed employees who regularly orders Chinese takeout calls the takeout place and Mac intercepts the call. She complains that she ordered over an hour ago. Mac puts on a Chinese accent and tells her that it's coming. A police security guard notices that the camera and motion sensors are out in the counting room. He overrides the system and tells the guard that they better get a count. The security guard goes to the cafeteria to summon counters. Donnie is hiding behind a table in the counting room, shoving unfit $100 bills into black Ziploc bags and tossing them down the trash chute. He triggers the motion sensors that have been turned back on. The security guard returns to the counting floor with the two counters. Ray radios Donnie and tells him to get out. He
He unscrews an air vent cover, gets into the shaft, and closes it. Talking over their radios, Donnie tells Ray that he's in the vents, and Ray signals Bosco to turn the power back on. Everyone gets back to work. Donnie jumps out of the ventilation shaft in the bathroom and collects the Chinese takeout bag he left there a few days ago. He uses the access card that the Fed employee left at the bar to get around the building. He delivers the old takeout to the disgruntled ladies in the cafeteria and leaves the building. Alexi and Boss are both on refuse removal duty, driving separate removal trucks for the same company the Fed uses. They stop at an intersection and nod at each other. The counters in the $100 counting room confirm that the Alameda count is correct. They roll the empty tubs back to Ray and Ensign and buzz them out of the waiting room. In the basement at the Fed, Alexi picks up the garbage with the refuse removal truck that he's driving. Ray and Ensign drive away from the Fed building in the armored truck. Bosco is tailing a refuse removal truck and gives Ray his location. Ray catches up with the refuse truck and blocks it off in the front while Bosco blocks it off at the rear in a Suburban. Bosco runs up to the driver's door, points a gun at the driver, boss, and orders him to get out. Bosco drives away in the refuse truck and the rest of the crew follow him to the dump site. Nick is speeding through LA looking for Ray's crew. He spots Donnie walking down the street and pulls over. Mac watches as Gus and Tony Z force Donnie into Nick's truck. Nick and the boys beat him up and demand to know where Ray is, until Donnie gives up his location. Ray's crew is at the dump site when Ray gets a call from Mac who says that Donnie is burned. Mac says that he's still clean and asks Ray where to go but Ray doesn't respond and hangs up. He tells Ensign that Donnie and Mac got burned and they drive away in the Suburban. Nick gets a visual on Ray and follows his Suburban onto a backed up freeway. He radios the location to Detectives Murph and Baracho. Ray looks in the rearview mirror and sees Nick's truck about 20 cars behind as traffic grinds to a halt. Gus cuffs Donnie to the inside of Nick's truck and gets out with Nick and Tony Z. Murph and Boracho arrive. Ray, Ensign, and Bosco get out of the Suburban while the regulators are closing in on them. Ray opens fire, connects with Boracho, and kills him. The regulators retaliate and anarchy ensues as hundreds of bullets slice through the air and rip into cars. Bosco takes a fatal bullet in the neck and Ray shoots Tony Z in the knee, incapacitating him. Ray and Ensign run into a street and Nick gives chase. Gus guns down Ensign with a fatal shot and Ray shoots Murph in the arm. Ray runs into an alley with Nick in hot pursuit. Nick manages to shoot Ray, seriously injuring him. Ray is struggling to reload his gun as he lies on the floor but manages to do it and forces himself to his feet. He walks towards Nick while shooting at him. Nick reloads his gun and shoots Ray in the chest. Ray drops behind a car and searches for a magazine in his vest. He realizes that he's out of ammo, stands up, and points his empty gun right at Nick. Nick reluctantly shoots Ray in self-defense, unsure about whether Ray's gun is loaded or not. Nick goes back to his car and discovers that Donnie has escaped. He and Gus open the black bags in the Suburban and find that they are filled with shredded bills. Nick goes to the bar where Donnie worked and asks about his whereabouts. The owner says that Donnie quit two days ago. He sits down at the bar and notices two Fed employees walk in with access cards around their necks. He hones in on a photo of a football team on the wall and sees Donnie, Mac, Boss, and Alexi on the team. He walks out of the bar and looks straight at the Federal Reserve Bank. Nick realizes that Donnie was the mastermind all along. Meanwhile, Donnie is bartending at a bar in London and sporting a British accent. Mac, Boss, and Alexi are laughing at the bar. We see flashbacks of Donnie approaching Ray about the Fed heist and Donnie taking the money from the Ziploc bags, concealing it in tires, and shipping it to Panama. Yeah. Thank you for watching. Subscribe Cinema Synopsis if you want to watch more recap videos.